intent of this committee to review the situation of um, procurement at the government agencies. And last night, the Guam legislature began that review with the Port Authority of Guam. More than an hour was dedicated on the port's legal services contract, which was capped at $499,999 per year until that cap was removed in April. But but before Thursday. you signed the amendment in April, did you have authorization from the board to sign? To I'm not aware, effect? Senator, that I would be required to get authorization on a contract that was not executed by the board. Throughout the entire oversight hearing, Port General Manager Joanne Brown, who was also a former senator, defended she has done nothing in the shadow of darkness, adding the board chairman and other members of the board were fully aware of her actions related to the port's legal services contract. She further questioned certain senators' motives with all the scrutiny. In order to realize and be able to pay out at the 499, you had to eliminate this to, to deal with that fiscal year approval to be able to pay invoices. Only with certified authority to do so. So removing this cap removes any amount that the makes makes a board liable for any any amount in excess of 499 since it's been removed. Yes, and the port can also board can very easily terminate its legal counsel should it choose to for abusing that process. Why such intense concern with all the contracts in Governor Guam with the legal counsel contract of Phillips and Berdalio at this there, time? There are other items on the agenda. You just well, make but, yourself comfortable. You know, some things are a bit obvious, but I, I just want to make it clear. Do you have any bias interests? Does this individual still work for you? She does, but I have no biases in this case. And we're to assume that. And because I'm to, you say so. And I'm to assume that everything you're saying is correct because you say so. Well, I assumed, I guess, if you want me to take you at your word, I assume you'll take me at mine. But as I will clarify, the Attorney General, to my understanding, has reviewed the contract. The Attorney General signed it. After responding an hour on the port's legal services contract, lawmakers would then turn their attention to whether the port was trying to sole source a procurement for a specific type of equipment and its connection to recently reappointed port board member Ed Elow and his company, JMI, which is a local agent for off-island company ASNE. We should know procurement was initiated prior to Brown coming on board at the port. I'm, I'm getting the sense that we're trying to see if a sole source was being influenced. That's what I'm, I'm hearing, and so I just want to pointedly ask, was there any influence by Mr. Elow or his company through the board or through the port to say, I have this machine and we want you to do business with you? Was there any kind of conversation or in, any influence like that? Yeah, you know, ma'am, when I initially came up here, I swore, and I said, by, by God's grace, and I'm telling you the truth, there was no influence. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And I'm not going to give up my integrity. But GSA Director Claudia Ekfaji provided a video to senators saying Joe Havalana, with the port, initially tried to sole source the equipment. You were awfully quiet, Senator Brown, when when it was revealed on the tape that there was an attempt to sole source. For the record, I've done no action. There's, you know, everyone keeps saying sole source and, and throwing that and banding it around. There's a procedure, even under prescribed by law, that would have to be executed to sole source the contract. And unless there's a conspiracy between Mr. Havilana and, you know, Paul Cepeda from DPW and the representatives here from Customs to accommodate all this, which I'm, I haven't been made aware of that that's the case. I don't see evidence that that's the case, that all these people have gotten into some kind of conspiracy. I haven't seen it. Oh, you assume you've uncovered. We provided you with this information. We've been transparent in providing information that's been requested. You act as if you did some undercover thing here. To get this information, we provided it as we do as best we can with all the FOIA requests, and we get numerous amounts from the Guam legislature. And I'll tell you in the future, Senator, as we've worked together in the past, all you need to do is call. Pick up the phone and call. If you want us to come and meet with you, we'd be more than happy to do that. But to be called to an oversight hearing because you're making assumptions that something improper, illegal shenanigans are going on and make this a vehicle for, for dialoguing, then I gotta wonder what your motives are. The oversight concluded just after 8 o'clock last night. Up next to appear before the Vice Speaker's Committee on Procurement is the Department of Education. Senator Ali Yamashita said she hopes the committee will be just as critical at scrutinizing the details with procurement with DOE as it was with the port.